What's up guys? Welcome to the Lawrence Likes Hoop NBA show. I'm your host Lawrence and today we just got some big big news of a big trade that just happened. The Jazz have finally dealt Donovan Mitchell and have sent him to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I mean through this whole process, through this whole story, we were, we were hearing that the Knicks, they were linked with Donovan Mitchell for the longest time. You have also Miami who's kind of linked there, the Wizards too, but then the Cavs snuck right in and they were able to get the deal done. When the news of this came out, I was in the car, I got the notification, I just did a quick pick, a quick peek, and I saw the Cavs have acquired Donovan Mitchell, but I couldn't see the details. So I, when I was in the car, I drove home as soon as possible. I drove home safely, so make sure y'all be driving safely. But I drove home safely to see what the full details were. And the full details are, the Cavs have traded Laurie Markkinen, their lottery pick Ochai Abaji, Con Sexton in a sign and trade deal, three unprotected first round picks, and two pick swaps for Donovan Mitchell. In my initial reaction, I like the trade for both teams. I know that might be the boring thing to say, but I honestly do. For this Cavs team, I mean, this is a team that's on the come up, and they just accelerated their timeline by adding another star in Donovan Mitchell. You know, they, their back their backcourt just got so much stronger um, and it's crazy because they were able to keep their core of Jared Allen Evan Mobley and Darius Garland and um, they made that clear I'm pretty sure we got the news that nothing you know they were not gonna separate that core and being able to just keep their core and still able to trade for a star like Donovan Mitchell you know good on Cleveland's part that they were able to do that it did come with them gutting their future giving up future assets but honestly, they think their future is now. I believe they're in a good spot right now with their future. You know, they just, their best players, Jared Allen and Darius Garland were just all-stars. You know, they feel like they're in a position to contend, to contend for a championship in these next coming years. And they don't need those draft picks. Now, I, honestly, I think that, I think that's, that's good. I think that you, um, you had, you, I think that, I think the same for them. I believe that they'll be contenders in the next coming years. I mean, this year they're gonna be dangerous. And adding Donovan Mitchell to that team, all of these guys, when we talk about future, their main core of Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, Darius Garland, they're all 24 and under. And they're all in long-term deals. Um, both Jared Allen, Jared Allen's gonna be there until 2026. Darius Garland just signed the max extension until 2027. And then Evan Mobley's gonna be there for a while. He's going to a second year. Probably gonna be there for maybe seven more years because they're gonna give him an extension as well. And Donovan Mitchell's still on his contract until 2026 and he has a player option after that. I mean, they're in a position where they can really do some damage in the East, man. I think they can be contenders in the next coming years. You know, they're all gonna get better. Evan Mobley, you know, his offense is gonna keep getting better. I mean, he was getting spoon fed a lot by Darius Garland, but you know, the jump shot's there. He just needs to attempt more. He can be a good shooter. Darius Garland's gonna keep continuing to be better. He can be a possible top five point guard in the league. Donovan Mitchell, one of the best two guards in the league. They're gonna be really good. Like like I said, I mean, this backcourt, it's gonna be exciting to see. There is the question about defense. I mean, Donovan Mitchell is not a defensive player. I mean, in college, he was considered a really, that was what his calling card was, a defensive player. But since then, I mean, last year, he was a horrible defender. They just relied on Rudy Gobert. They just sent all the, all the drives, everything to Rudy Gobert. Donovan Mitchell has to pick it up, and I think he will. I think he won't be a slouch. He doesn't have to focus so much on offense. He can put some of his energy into defense. And with this team, I mean, the projected lineup is probably going to be Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Isaac Okoro, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen. I put Isaac Okoro there because of his defense as a wing defender. Hopefully, he can establish himself as a three-point shooter. He only gives defense right now. But hopefully he can be a threat from the perimeter. But if you want more offense, you can't put Karis LeVert. I would like Karis LeVert off the bench, be a six man, could be a six man of the year kind of player and provide the offense off the bench. But I mean, you can't go wrong either way. Hopefully Isaac Okoro, um, his offense elevates. Yeah, when it comes to defense, I mean, they can be a really good team. Like I said, Donovan Mitchell just has to be better on that end. I think he will be. But yeah, I mean, offensively, Darius Garland, he's right there. Um, Evan Mobley, he's gonna keep getting better. I mean, you have a defensive, that's a great backcourt back there. This 
I mean, the backcourt right now, Donovan Mitchell, Isaac, I mean, Donovan Mitchell, and Darius Garland, the backcourt, one of the best backcourts right now already. I'm saying it. And then you got one of the best front courts with Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. This is gonna be a fun team. You know, they're gonna be very exciting. And even on the bench, even though they were gutted, I mean, Colin Sexton is gone, um, Laurie Markinen, and um, they got rid of their. Uh, What's it called? Their lottery pick and Ochai Abaji. I mean, they still have a solid. They still have solid pieces. They still have Kevin Love. They still have Ricky Rubio. Um, you know, Ricky Rubio had a good year before he tore his ACL, I believe. Kevin Love was in the running for Sixth Man of the Year. Dean Wade is a good defensive player. Chetty Osman, he's been with the Cavs forever, but he's a solid player. I think they'll figure it out. Like I said, I like this Cavs team. When it comes to where they will be at in the East um, next year. I think they're still, I mean, next year they can do some damage. Um, it could be contenders. I'm more so thinking the year after that, after these players really elevate their game, natural progression with Evan Mobley, Darius Garland. Um, but when it comes to the next year, you still got Philadelphia, Milwaukee, uh, Boston. I would think it's safe to say they'll be, they'll be, they can be in that fourth spot. I believe so. I mean, Brooklyn's still there, but you know, I think this Cavs team will be really good. They were able to make the playing game, but they were struggling with some injuries. Honestly, I thought they were going to be a solidified playoff team last year already. They're in the come up. You know, I think it's it's a good move for this team to add Donovan Mitchell. They just got so much better. And then when we go to the Jazz, what can you say? Danny Ainge did his thing this offseason. He was able to accumulate 15, 15 first round picks the next seven years that ties okc they're in a really good position to rebuild and plus they still have some older players that are good quality players like jordan clarkson um boyan bogdanovich uh and mike conley these are guys who can help contenders and they can move these guys hopefully they can they're on some larger contracts but if they can move these guys during the season they can still get more assets they're in a really good position to you know make some noise in the future and rebuild and do something that like, like okc is doing and with the main part of the package it was colin sexton who was a uh, part of this this sign and trade deal that the Cavs did um to make the contracts work he just signed a four-year 72 million dollar deal i like this move i like colin sexton you know he's a bucket and you can make the argument that he's just a cheaper Donovan Mitchell. These guys are negative defenders. They're not, they haven't been known for defenders. I mean, they were known for defense in college, you know, high school, but these guys are buckets, offensive players, undersized two guards that don't really play defense. And Colin Sexton, he's still a young player who can grow. But I mean, in his last full season, which was in 2021, he averaged 24 points. He's gonna average 20 plus points for this team. He's going to be really good, I think. It's going to be a good opportunity for him to just, you know, be who he is. There's not going to be much pressure on him. You know, he's going to be with the Cavs probably on that qualifying offer if he was going to stay, be a sixth man for them, and which is not bad. He could probably end up being a good sixth man in this league. But with Utah, he's going to be part of their future. He's on a long-term deal. He'll be able to score. He'll be able to um, be, maybe be a better playmaker too as well. And then just... You know, hopefully he can become a better defender. I think he'll be a better defender. I mean, you see the heart, you see the tenacity with Colin Sexton. Um, you know, he's going to be good. I like Colin Sexton. You know, he's a bucket. He's going to get a lot of buckets next year. And then you also got Larry Markinen. He was, he can go back to his natural position as a four or a five. I mean, he's seven foot. Cleveland have had him playing as a three, which he, he didn't do too bad. He averaged like 15 points, but I mean, he's seven foot. He's not going to be able to keep up with those wings in this league. So putting him back at the four, it's gonna be good for them. And then Ochai Abaji, you know, I liked him in college. He's a good, he can be a good three and D player in this league. He's an older rookie. So, I mean, he's gonna add that. He's another asset for them as well. And just, you know, it's gonna be exciting for the Jazz and their future and see what they do with their draft picks. Obviously, I don't think they're gonna use all of them, um, but they'll be in a position where they can get a Victor Wen, Benyama, Scoot Henderson. They can get another player in this draft and the drafts to come and use these other future draft picks um as as you know for a trade to us well when they get to that point where they feel like they can compete so i think both teams are in a good position the Cavs definitely you know these next couple years are going to be very exciting with all these young players on long-term deals they just gotta you know put, do some work around the edges to see who's going to be that wing whether it's isaac okoro karis lavert maybe they make a move for somebody else and then just fill out that bench the bench is solid but it can get better 
but yeah, for the next coming up, upcoming years for this Cleveland Cavalier team, they will be good. And Utah, Danny Ainge, doing his best impression of Sam Presti. Um, I mean, Danny Ainge did his job. He did, he did what he had to do, man. I mean, the deal with the Knicks didn't go down, but he was able to find another shooter that was able to give him more picks. And more picks might be on the way when they move their older players. So, like I said, I do like this. And this is my initial reaction. So, as the days go on, as I ingest more information, we'll see how it changes. But as of right now, I mean, I think this is what I will stick on. I like the moves for both teams. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens.